All right, answering more of your questions. Uh, this one is again from Instagram. When's a time you made a mistake in mixing? I feel you don't make mistakes, LOL. Well, thank you. I, I do make mistakes. I don't release my mixes <laughs> until I fixed my mistakes though. So I can't think of uh, any particular mistake that slipped and went to publishing. <laughs> Let's put it this way. There are mixes that I did like I'm at the very beginning of my career that I'm not, I mean, listening to them now, I'm, go like, I'm like, oh my God, no, you know? But um, I think everybody has a story like this. Everybody who, you know, every mix engineer has a story like this, but none of them, like there's nothing that I'm like ashamed of or something. I just listen to it and I, and I of course, uh, say, Oh my God, I would, I would mix that much better now. But you know, we were talking about like 20 years ago or something. For the best of my knowledge, not no like giant mistake or something made it to publishing, but I do make mistakes when I mix because everybody does. And uh, the, the trick is recognizing, you know, the mistakes. And at this point of my career, the process is very simple. And by mistake, what happens is maybe you drench a vocal on effects, which doesn't necessarily mean like reverbs or delay, but just effects. But then you realize, oh, wait a second, it, this doesn't match. And so a mistake that I think uh, I caught myself making is to try in, in unconsciously to showcase my skills as opposed to do the best for the song. So that I think I caught myself doing, making that mistake a couple of times, even more, because maybe it was a big client or it was a new client uh, and you kind of wanted to impress him. But fortunately, I've always caught myself in time and, 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 and went like, hold on, you did too much here. You just, it, this is not you working and thinking this is the best for the song. This is you trying to make a mix that will make your peers saying, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, wow, how did he do it? But the problem is none of this is ever going to happen if the mix as a whole doesn't sound great, right? So even when you want to try to show off and, you know, we do it from time to time, uh, because it's not really showing off if done correctly. It's like, holy, you know, I didn't hear this ear candy the, the first time around and now I'm hearing it. And that's kind of like, I want to say a, a signature of my mixes. I try to do this and, and I try to put layers and layers that um, the listener hear new things every time that, you know, listen to the mix again. But if the mix is not good, the listener won't listen to it a second or a third or a fourth time. I am guilty of getting caught up into making something cool that I, I didn't at first realize or ask myself, is this the best for the song? And sometimes you just have an idea, you think it's the best for the song, like effects on vocals, because I do a lot of, like all my effects are custom and one of a kind. I have an idea, I try it, and then, you know, I think it's the best for the song, but then when I hear it, it doesn't work. Or sometimes it happens that you hear the chorus, right? And it kind of sounds cool, but then that's another thing that I always make sure I do. When you work on a section of a song, don't only loop and listen to that part, always get there from the previous section because that's how the song is gonna play. And sometimes things sound cool, by themselves in isolation, right? It's just very much like mixing. When you mix and you isolate and you solo the kick and you sculpt your kick to perfection and then you open the mix and the kick is gone, right? It's because it's what's important is the whole picture. So you get like, it's a chorus, you get there from the verse and you hear how that effect or that automation move works in the context. And uh, sometimes, yeah, you, because I still have very much of a passion for this, I like to do things, I like to work on mixes and, and I like to do cool things. Sometimes you kind of have to, you know, ask yourself like, hold on, you know, is this, is this uh, too much? Is it you just trying to show off or is this actually, you know, the best for the song? That's why I also learned how to route my mixes so I can have quick access to 
the macro things and the macro elements that I do in a mix. So I can quickly like vocal effects, you know, lead vocal effects, all my lead vocal effects go to a bus, uh, which I control with one fader and just that's quickly, you know, it's easy to just lower all the reverbs and all the, the web of delays and, and special effects that I do on my mixes just for a second and have a different perspective on how does it sound if it's dry or drier, right? Same for everything else. Like, oh, I have all my macro controls on my fingertip because of that. So, yeah. And uh, I want to probably, in back, back then, uh, at the very beginning of my career, um, I call this a mistake, but it wasn't, I mean, I wasn't as experienced nowhere near where I am now. So I was, it was, I was working with analog. I had my first pieces and, uh, I had my patch bay and I never, for, never remember where was, you know, this compressor, that compressor. I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't have the muscle memory yet. So every time I was trying to figure out the patch bay and everything. And that one time I remember I, I was mixing this song. It was an alt rock song. I was lucky because uh, I meant to send my drums, the stereo drum bus to a compressor, I think it was a TG1. And instead of sending the stereo ox to the TG1, I accidentally send a mono sum of the drum into a, a DBX 170, uh, 165, the black one, which was set for who knows what with crushing compression and crushing limiting and that was a aha moment because that was completely a mistake but it sounded amazing and i actually kept this technique uh, up until today when i uh, create my punch bus for the drum which is a mono send where i send uh, the shells kick snare toms into something like a distressor or a valet dynamite and a crash it and just tuck it in when I need more power and more punch in the center of a drum and uh, I usually automate that one like on a chorus or on a bridge or on a special something like that so that was a, a happy mistake I hope this answered the question if you guys have questions for the Q&A's leave it in the comment down below please consider using the super thanks here and support the channel click the join button to access the exclusive content a lot of new mixing and mastering courses heading your way thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already see you next time Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat Lift me up, up, man, take control, up Heart is so gone, my type Don't you know I fall for the bad type You play the role of an angel pretty well